Hello everyone. Welcome to the Mobile Device Manager Plus Training Program. I hope you are all doing well. I'm Kesika, a product specialist at Manage Engine, and I will be the host for today's webinar. This is a three-week training program designed to help you familiarize with the features offered by MDM. We are in week one right now, wherein we will look into how you can bring your devices into management in an automated way and how to pre-configure device settings so that they are corporate usage ready. In week two, you will see complete app lifecycle management starting from installation through to the distribution and deletion of the apps, along with securing your corporate data and your devices. In week three, we will take you through modern management of Windows 10 machines and Mac machines. To know more about the training program and to view the recordings of the same, you can visit the link given under the table. Let's take a look at our training agenda. We will begin with our products overview. This will be especially helpful if you are new to MDM. We will cover a general introduction of MDM and its architecture along with a few prerequisites for getting started with MDM. We will then move on to enrolling devices, both devices that are already in use and devices that are freshly purchased. Now that the devices are managed, the next step is configuring the devices. We will see how you can configure basic policies in your devices to make them usage ready and how to secure corporate data in your personal iOS devices. We all know that your exchange will have confidential corporate data in them and it is important to ensure that no unauthorized person is allowed access to it. We will see how you can restrict that using conditional exchange access. We will then end this session with various scenarios that you might come up with and how MDM will help you solve those problems. Before moving onward, I have to mention that this is a live webinar and all the attendees are muted to avoid audio distractions. So if you have any queries in between the training session, you don't have to wait till the end for the Q&A session. You can feel free to share those in the questions pane. We have an expert panel waiting to answer all of your queries in real time. Starting off with the overview of Mobile Device Manager Plus. MDM helps you manage devices running across multiple platforms such as Apple iPhones, iPads, MacBooks, and Apple TVs, Android smartphones, tablets, and Android TVs, Windows smartphones, with tablets, Windows 10 machines, and your Surface hubs, and also your Chromebooks. MDM is available as an add-on to Desktop Central, a flagship UEM product of Manage Engine. If you are just looking to manage your mobile devices and modern management facilities for Windows 10 machines and MacBooks, you can opt our standalone solution. Or if you are an MSP looking out to manage your client's devices from a single console, you can opt our MSP edition. This has the same set of features as MDM standalone with customer segmentation and multi-tenant approach. All of these editions are available both as on-premises and cloud version. We understand that you already have multiple application in your existing setup. Thus, we have designed MDM to seamlessly fit in your architecture through integrations. MDM offers extensive integration with Service Desk Plus and in-house ticketing software of Manage Engine. You can also integrate MDM with various other help desk softwares such as Spiceworks, Shira Service Desk, Zendesk Support, and ServiceNow. 
MDM also integrates with Zoho CRM, a customer relationship management software, and with Zoho Creator, using which you can create your own custom web applications and deploy it to your organization. You can also integrate MDM with other third-party applications by using the publicly available API that can be accessed from the link shown on the screen. Moving on to the architecture, MDM has three main components, the MDM server, mobile devices, and the notification services. These notification services are platform dependent. We have Apple Push Notification Service or APNS for Apple devices, Firebase Cloud Messaging or FCM for Android devices, and Windows Notification Services or WNS for Windows devices. These notification services stay in contact with the devices all the time. MDM leverages this and uses the notification services to wake up the devices. And the devices in turn will contact MDM for commands to be executed. Since the managed devices can also stay outside your corporate network, you need to ensure that your server is always reachable to them by latting your internal IP to a public IP. But if you are concerned about exposing your server to the public network, you can optionally configure Secure Gateway. This will route the communications from the devices to the server. You need not worry about these settings if you are a cloud customer. MDM also lets you integrate with directory services such as Okta, G Suite, etc for easier user assignment and authentication. As we saw in the previous slide, a lot of communications are happening between the server, the devices, and the notification services. In order to facilitate those communications, we need to keep certain ports open. For example, for the device to contact MDM server, port 9383 must be kept open. To know the complete list of ports, you can visit the link given under the table. Now to the part how MDM actually manages devices. In case of Apple, Windows, and Chromebooks, MDM leverages the inbuilt management capabilities and uses the native client to manage these devices. You need not install a separate application to manage these. While in case of Android, ME MDM app must be installed on the device to manage Android. Now that you have met MDM framework, let's take a look at our console so that you can better understand the rest of the training session. On the dashboard, you can view the number of enrolled devices, inactive devices, enrollment pending devices, enrolled users, and devices with blocklisted apps. You're also presented with a summarized information of the device type that are managed, the platform on which these devices run, number of block listed apps in your network, and the device contact summary. You can also view the activities that are performed on the console from audit block feed. These information are presented in an easy to scan format so that you can use the dashboard for a very quick insight into how your day is going. In the device management tab, you can view all the management functionalities that MDM offers. You can add devices to groups, you can push profiles, apps, and content to your devices. You can remotely troubleshoot your devices and also configure conditional access policies and geofencing policies. In the inventory tab, you can view the granular details of the managed devices. You can block list apps, view real-time location of the devices, scan your devices manually, or schedule automatic device scan to stay up to date about the device details. You can also track and monitor the battery level of devices and set alert notifications 
when the verb battery reaches certain level. In the enrollment tab, you can view the devices that are enrolled into MDM and their statuses. You can also view the enrollment methods that MDM offers and configure enrollment settings. You can choose the authentication method to be performed while enrolling a device and choose to be notified whenever a device is unmanaged by a user. You can also mark devices as inactive if contact is lost for more than the number of days specified here. On the Reports tab, you can generate reports from the predefined set categorized by apps, hardware, enrollment, and security. For example, you can generate a report of new apps that are discovered in your network. You can also schedule the report generation to receive the reports via email on a timely basis. You can also generate custom reports using queries. On the admin tab, you can configure basic server settings, privacy settings, security settings, and your database settings. From the support tab, you can read our forum posts, our blogs, and our extensive step-by-step -step help documents. You can also contact our support technicians using live chat or by calling the toll-free number. I hope now you have got an idea of how MDM works. Let's now enroll our devices. Assuming I am the IT admin of organization Zilker, and I am planning to introduce mobility in my organization. I have devices that are already in use, and I'm also planning to purchase new ones. MDM offers different enrollment methods to enroll already in use devices and fresh devices. We'll begin with devices that are already in use. We have enrollment with invites and self-enrollment. I'll brief you when and why you can use these methods. You can choose either of these methods when the devices to be enrolled or personally owned or bring your own devices, or when the corporate owned devices are also personally enabled and you do not want granular control over your devices. While MDM offers automated migration from your existing vendor without data loss for iOS and Samsung devices, we need to factory reset non-Samsung devices while migration. But if you don't want to factory reset the migrating non-Samsung devices, you can choose these methods. If you want to know how to migrate devices, you can drop in your requests in the questions pane. We will arrange a remote session with you and our customer support experts will assist you through the migration. Why should you use these methods? Since the corporate data is present in the user's personal device, data breach can occur when a corporate data is shared between managed and unmanaged devices. And the user can also share data between managed and unmanaged apps or store the data in other third-party cloud services, which can result in data breach. Hence, to avoid data breach when a device is enrolled, MDM separates personal space from corporate workspace by creating a container. All the apps and data distributed from MDM will be stored only in the container. This will ensure that the admin will have complete control over the corporate data while having zero control over personal data. This will preserve employees' privacy while securing corporate data. On Android devices, this container will be created by default as soon as you enroll the device. The apps with the briefcase icon are the apps distributed from MDM. Any data distributed from MDM can only be accessed by these work apps. Since all policies and restrictions are applied to the corporate apps, this also ensures that no unauthorized access is allowed into the corporate data. And sharing of data between apps and devices is also restricted. 
but on an Apple device, this container will not be created by default. We will discuss how to create a container in iOS devices later in this session. Let us start off with enrollment via invites. There are three steps involved in enrolling via invites. The admin first sends out invites to the users. The users then accept the invitation either by scanning the QR code or by accessing the enrollment URL present on the invite and enrolls the devices into MDM. Let me show you how this is done on the server. Click on enrollment and in the enrollment tab under devices, choose enroll a device. As you can see, these invites are platform dependent. I'm going to choose iOS for now. But there is a prerequisite to manage Apple devices. I hope you remember the role of notification services in managing devices. Apple mandates that an APN certificate must be obtained to establish a secure communication between MDM server and the APNS portal. Since APNS certificate is already created on the server, I'll show you how to create one on a different server. Under enrollment, click on APNS certificate under Apple. Download the vendor signed CSR and we need to upload this on the APNS portal. To upload, log into APNS portal with your corporate Apple ID. Ensure to use your corporate Apple ID. This is because this APNS expires in a year and it is mandatory to renew the certificate with the same ID used while creating APNS. If you already have one, you can sign into Apple portal by clicking here or you can create a new Apple ID by clicking here. After you've downloaded the vendor signed CSR, log into Apple portal and click on create a certificate. Read the terms of use and accept it. Upload the CSR we just downloaded from the MDM console and click on upload. Once your CSR is verified, a new APNS certificate will be created. You can click on download and upload this on the MDM server. So log in back to MDM server and upload the APNS certificate here. Enter your corporate email ID used while creating APNS certificate. Enter your organization name. And as I said, this APNS certificate expires in a year. So enter your corporate email ID to be notified three months prior to the expiry so that you can renew the certificate well in advance. Click on upload. Now that we have all the prerequisites out of the way, let's get back to enrolling. Choose the platform type. MDM offers two methods to enroll via invites. You can choose by myself to enroll devices at hand if you feel your users are not technically adept to be able to enroll their devices by themselves. But if you don't have the devices with you and you wish to reduce admin intervention, you can choose through user invites and send out invites to your users, letting them enroll their devices. You can either select a local user or a user already added from your directory services like AD or Octa. Or you can create, click on add user to add a new user. Define the ownership of the device and assign a group to the device. Assigning a group to a device before enrollment will ensure that all apps and profiles distributed to the group will be automatically distributed to the devices as soon as it is enrolled into MDM. Let me quickly show you how this enrollment invite will look like. You can scan the QR code or enter the enrollment URL present on the invite to access the enrollment window. Let's see how this looks like on the device end. On an iOS device, this is how the enrollment window would be displayed. First step is installing the MDM profile on the device. 
click on continue and allow to download the MDM profile. Once downloaded, Apple mandates that this profile has to be manually installed by the user. This is to ensure that the user can have a glimpse of all the configurations that this profile will bring into their device. Close this profile downloaded notification and go to settings and click on profile downloaded. Click on install and trust to install the MDM profile. Once installed, the device will be successfully enrolled with MDM. There are two things you need to keep in mind before sending out invites. These invites are user specific and device OS specific. Thus, the same invite cannot be used by two users or on different platforms. And for security reasons, the OTP that is sent with the invite will expire in seven days. So, if you want to enroll devices in bulk with minimal admin intervention or you're unaware of the device platforms, you can choose self-enrollment method. In self-enrollment, the admin will publish a common URL in the organization. The users can use this common URL to access the enrollment window. They will then need to authenticate themselves with their directory credentials. Once done, the device will get enrolled with MDM. Hence, it is mandatory to integrate your directory services with MDM to enable self-enrollment. Let me take you to the server to show you how to enroll using self-enrollment. Click on self-enrollment. This is the common URL using which your users can access the enrollment window. You can copy this URL and share it with your employees. Let us now configure enrollment settings. You can allow self-enrollment for all groups or only for selected groups. You can also exclude specific groups by clicking here. Since the enrollment is in the hands of the users, we have two options to have a check on the devices being enrolled using this method. You can limit the number of devices that can be enrolled per user and choose to be notified whenever a new device is enrolled using self-enrollment. You can also assign devices to groups so that all apps and profiles distributed to the groups will be automatically associated with the device. I'll show you how this enrollment process will look like on the device end. On an Android device, once the user accesses the enrollment URL, they will be prompted to install any MDM app. Once installed, the user can open the app and enter the server details that will be available on the enrollment window. Click on continue, then they will be prompted to authenticate themselves using their directory credentials. Follow the on-screen instructions. Once done, the enrollment will be successfully complete. We have seen methods for enrolling devices already in use. Let's now move on to enrolling new devices. Let's assume I have purchased a bunch of new devices and I want to bring them under management before handing the devices to employees. Usually, the admin will have to complete the initial setup manually and admin or user intervention is required for enrollment. Hence, to ease out the onboarding process, MDM offers automated enrollment methods. We have Apple Business Manager for Apple devices and for Android devices, we have zero touch enrollment for non-Samsung devices and Knox Mobile enrollment for Samsung devices. In today's session, we will see Apple Business Manager and zero touch enrollment methods. Let's see why these enrollment methods are the best for corporate owned devices. Since these devices are owned by the company, when enrolled using these methods, the company can have full control over the device. For example, 
you can silently install or uninstall apps without any user intervention. You can whitelist apps on devices and lock devices to only enterprise approved apps. You can also schedule or automate OS updates. So whenever there is a new OS update and you want to test your internal apps compatibility that OS, you can delay the update. Or if the update is a security fix, you can force immediate update. Let's dive into the process now. There are two prerequisites to enroll devices using these methods. First, you need to create a corporate account with Apple or Google based on which portal you are using. And the devices to be enrolled must be purchased directly or from authorized resellers. What are the steps involved in automated enrollment methods? First, we will have to integrate the ABM portal or ZTE portal with the MDM server. Once our customer details are added to the respective portals, all the devices we purchased will be mapped to the portals automatically. We can either activate the device and distribute it to employees or we can let the users activate the devices by themselves. Once activated, the device will get, get registered with MDM. Note that this integration is a one-time process. Once you have completed integration, there is no fourth step. You purchase the devices, distribute them, and activate to complete enrollment with zero admin intervention. We will begin with Apple Business Manager Enrollment Method. Click on Enrollment and click on Apple Enrollment. First step is integrating the portals. For the integration, we need to download the public key from MDM. We have to upload this on the ABM portal. You can log into ABM portal with your Apple ID. If you do not have one, you can create a new ABM ID by clicking here. Once logged in, click on Settings, Device Management Settings, and Add New MDM Server. Provide a name for the server based on your organization's locations or departments, and upload the public key we just downloaded from MDM console. Since I'm going to add devices from my SFO department, I have named the server as Zilker SFO for my identification purposes. Once you have uploaded your public key, click on Save. A new MDM server has been added to the AVM portal. Click on Download Token and Download Server Token. Note that if you have an existing server token, this will replace the older one. Since we are now creating a new server, we can ignore this warning. After you have downloaded the server token, we need to upload this on the MDM server. Just like the APNS certificate, this server token also expires in a year. So enter your email ID to be notified prior to expiry. Click on Upload. The final step is configuring device activation settings. You can choose who needs to activate the device. If you select users, the device will be automatically assigned to the user who active authenticates using their directory credentials. Hence, integrating directory services is mandatory to enable auto user assign option. If you choose admin, you need to manually assign users and groups to the devices. You can enable only the setup assistant screens that are mandatory and skip the rest. You can also choose to automatically create admin account in MacBooks during activation. Once you have configured this to your preference, click on Create. A new ABM server has been added to the MDM portal. You can click on Add Server to add multiple servers for devices in different locations or departments and customize the device, device activation settings. 
With this, we have completed integration. The next step is adding devices to the portal. Let's log in back to ABM portal to enter your customer details. Click on settings, device management settings. If you have purchased the devices from Apple, Apple will assign a customer number to your organization. If you purchased the devices from Apple Store, you can get the customer number from their business team. Enter your customer number and click on Done. If you purchased the devices from authorized resellers, confirm if they support the device enrollment feature of ABM and enter your reseller ID and click on Save. You need to provide your organization ID to your reseller to register the devices you purchased as DEP devices. Once saved, all your devices will be mapped to the portal. You can now add these devices to the MDM server. You can add devices either by entering the serial number, order number, or by uploading a CSV file containing serial or order number of the devices. Under Perform Action, choose Assign to Server and select the respective MDM server. Click on Done. Device assignment is now complete. Let's go back to the MDM console to assign users to these devices. Click on Apple Enrollment. MDM has segregated user assignment so that even when an employee leaves the organization, you just need to reassign user instead of re-enrolling the device. And the device will always be under management. You can manually assign users to individual devices by clicking on Assign User option. Enter the username, group to be assigned, and the device name. Note that this device name is only for your identification purposes. Or you can upload a CSV file containing the username, email ID, and group name. After you have assigned user, we need to activate the device to complete enrollment. Let's see how it appears on the device while activation. The user will be prompted to connect to Wi-Fi. After the device is connected to a Wi-Fi, the device will fetch management configuration details. As you can see, the user does not have the option to skip installing the configuration profile. This will ensure that the user will not be able to use the device without enrolling it. Once the configuration is installed, the device will be successfully enrolled with MDM. Let's now move on to zero touch enrollment method. First step is integrating the portals. To integrate, let's go to MDM server. Click on zero touch enrollment and click on zero touch enrollment steps. We begin with associating a Google account with your corporate email ID. With the help of your resellers, you can create a zero touch account. Then log into ZTE portal with your corporate account by clicking here. After you have logged in, click on configurations and add a new configuration. Enter the configuration name. EMMDPC refers to the management solution that you have chosen. In our case, it is going to be Manage Engine MDM. To fetch the DPC extras, let's go back to MDM server. Copy this JSON file and paste this on the ZTE portal. As you can see, this JSON file will have your server details. Entering this on ZTE portal will help the ZTE portal integrate with your MDM server. After you've pasted the DPC extras, enter your company name and your contact email ID and click on Apply. A new configuration has been created. The integration is now complete. Next step is adding devices to the portal. You can either add devices by uploading a CSV 
containing the device details on the devices pane. Or you can click on resellers and enter your reseller details, get the help of your resellers to add the devices. Once the devices are added, apply the configuration to your devices and activate the device to complete enrollment. Now let's see how this looks like on the device end. Once Wi-Fi is connected, the device will fetch management configuration and the user will be prompted to download MEMDM app. The device is now being set up as a work device. Once this is done, the device will be successfully enrolled into MDM. A quick recap on enrollment. We have seen invite and self-enrollment for devices that are already in use. For new devices, we have seen automated enrollment methods, ABM and ZTE. MDM offers various other enrollment methods for enrolling corporate devices. But due to time constraint, I will not be able to cover these in this session. If you are interested in knowing more about the other enrollment programs, you can register for a free and personalized demo. We will set up one for you with our customer support technicians at your convenient time. Drop in your requests in the questions pane. Now our devices are enrolled. The next step is ensuring that these devices are compliant with our organization's policies. We achieve that using profiles. Profiles are policies and restrictions that you remotely configure on your devices using MDM. I'll show you how you can configure profiles on the console. Let's close this now. Click on device management and click on profiles. These profiles are policies and restrictions that you can remotely configure on your devices. So let's create a new profile and choose the platform. Name the profile and provide a description to the profile and click continue. The first line of defense against any threat is having a strong passcode. MDM lets you define passcode parameters such as the passcode length and minimum number of special characters. This will ensure that, the, that your users can only, sec, sec, can only configure a secure passcode. You can also specify the number of failed attempts and the maximum number of failed attempts the device will be factory reset. You can also specify the max, maximum passcode age after which the passcode will expire. You can also maintain your passcode in history so that your users cannot use the same passcode over and over again. I'm going to select 4 as my minimum passcode length, save the profile and publish it. The profile is now ready to be distributed to the devices. You can click here to associate the profile to groups or devices. But before associating a profile to your production environment, I would recommend you to test out the profile in a test device and see if you are satisfied with it, and then push it to your entire organization. So let's first test out this profile. Click here and click on the devices tab. I'm going to filter the platform type as Apple and select the test device. Under action, click on associate profile and choose the profile. The profile is now successfully associated with the device. Let me show you how this will look like on the device end. As soon as the profile is distributed, the user will receive a notification to change his passcode. If the user is in the middle of a work, the user can delay the notification by clicking on later, or the user can change the passcode immediately by clicking on continue. But after 60 minutes, the user will be forced to change the passcode or else the device will be locked up. There is one thing you need to know about passcode profile. 
if the user has a passcode that is already compliant with the passcode policy, no notification will be sent to change the passcode since the device's passcode is already compliant. After testing out the profile, I feel the passcode could be more secure. So let's now modify the passcode policy. Go to Profiles and select the profile. Click on Modify, Continue. I'm going to choose 6 as my minimum passcode length now. Save this profile and publish it. This profile has now to be updated on the device. So, after modifying a profile, you need to save it, publish it, and then update it on the devices. Just saving it will not have any impact on the device. This workflow is to ensure that even if you accidentally modified a profile, it won't affect your production environment. Since I'm now satisfied with the profile, I'm going to apply it to my production environment. Click on Groups and Devices and select the group. Under Action, click on Associate Profile and Associate the Profile. The profile has been successfully associated to my production environment. Now let's see how we can configure basic network policies like Wi-Fi and VPN on the device. Click on the flash symbol and create a new iOS profile. Provide a name and description and click continue. Select Wi-Fi and enter your Wi-Fi SSID. You can choose to connect to this Wi-Fi automatically whenever the device comes in the vicinity. Select your security type and choose the supported protocols. After you have entered all the details, click on Save. As you can see, you can add multiple Wi-Fi configurations in a single profile. So, even when the first one is not reachable, the devices can still connect to the other ones and remain in contact with the server. Since we are all working remotely, connecting to VPN has become more important than ever. To configure, select your connection type from the drop-down, enter your connection name and your server address. You can also choose to enable VPN on demand. This will ensure that your users will automatic, automatically be connected to VPN whenever the specified domain like zilker.com is accessed from the device. After you've entered all the necessary details, save this profile. You can also configure VPN, VPN using MDM. This will ensure that the devices will connect automatically to VPN whenever the users access the specified apps. Let's now configure Exchange Active Sync. Enter your account name and choose your host type. Since I have chosen Exchange Online, my server address is pre-populated. You may be wondering, since Exchange is user-specific, do I have to enter the user IDs of every single user? The answer is no. MDM offers smart way to dynamically populate user details from your AD using the user principal name attribute. So, if you have integrated your directory services, you just need to enter percentage UPN percentage, which is the dynamic variable. After you have filled in all the details, save the profile. MDM also offers custom configuration. Using this feature, you can create custom profiles using third-party tools such as Apple Configurator and distribute them to your devices from MDM. But it is recommended to create custom profiles only for policies that MDM currently does not offer. Once you're satisfied with the profile, publish it and distribute it to your devices. Let's see how we can simulate a container on Apple devices. As we discussed earlier, on an Apple device, the container will not be created by default. So, when you open a corporate content, both your personal and corporate apps will have access to the content. 
For example, when you're opening a managed email attachment, both your personal and corporate apps can open and share the document. Since this is not ideal, MDM provides a workaround using restrictions to simulate a container. Let's go to MDM console and click on restrictions. To restrict sharing data between devices, you can restrict camera, screenshots and screen recording and airdrop. To restrict sharing data between apps, click on security and restrict sharing data from managed apps to unmanaged apps. This will ensure your corporate content cannot be accessed by your unmanaged apps. You can also restrict sh sharing data from unmanaged apps to managed apps. This will prevent malwares in the unmanaged apps from reaching your managed apps. To restrict users from backing up data, click on advanced security and restrict adding or modifying iCloud, Mail and other accounts. This will restrict users from adding their personal account to devices. You can also restrict iTunes and other USB connections to restrict users from backing up their devices. You can also click on iCloud and restrict device backup using iCloud. Once you have configured all feasible restrictions, save and publish the profile and distribute it to your devices. Let's see how this looks like on the device after the policy has been applied. As you can see, the corporate content can only be accessed by the work apps and your personal apps are blocked from accessing the corporate data. We have seen how to secure data in devices. Now we will see how you can secure data in your exchange accounts using conditional exchange access also known as CEE. Why do we need CEE? Since your users have their exchange account credentials, they can access their exchange from any of the devices. To avoid that, we apply CEE policy, which will block access to exchange from unmanaged devices. To configure CEE policy, first we will need to integrate the MDM server and the exchange server. We will then configure and enforce conditional exchange access policy. This will allow only devices enrolled with MDM to access exchange. Let's configure CEA policy now. Click on exchange under conditional access. Choose your host type. And since I have chosen exchange online, my server address is pre-populated. Enter your admin username and your password. Click on next. Our exchange server details have now been added to MDM portal. Let's configure access policy. Click on configure now. You can apply this policy on all users or only for your selected users. You can also exclude specific users by clicking here. You can also configure a grace period during which the users can access their exchange even from unmanaged devices. But once this grace period ends, your users will not be able to access their exchange from unmanaged devices. The selected users will be sent a mail with self-enrollment URL for them to enroll their devices. So ensure to enable self-enrollment and integrate your directory services to configure CEA policy. Once you have configured this, click on Apply Policy. Access policy is now successfully applied. This will ensure that your unmanaged devices are blocked from accessing your exchange and only your managed devices are allowed to access the exchange. We are now in the final section of this webinar where we discuss FAQs in detail. Scenario 1. Can we enroll devices not purchased from authorized resellers into ABM? As we discussed, 
only devices purchased from authorized resellers can be added to ABM. But Apple has provided a free utility tool, Apple Configurator, to enroll devices that are not directly purchased from Apple. Install Apple Configurator on a Mac machine and add a new blueprint. While preparing the blueprint, enable Add to Device Enrollment Program. After you've prepared the blueprint, connect your iPhones to the host MacBook and apply the blueprint to your devices. Activate the device and the device will be added to ABM portal. Note that only iPhones running iOS 11 or above can be enrolled using this method. If you want an extensive explanation of this enrollment method, you can register for our free and personalized demo from the chat pane. Scenario 2. I want to leverage the benefits of zero-touch enrollment, but some of my devices are not supported. How do I enroll these devices? If your devices are not supported in ZTE, MDM offers EMM token enrollment method. This method has all the benefits of ZTE except mandatory management. To enroll, while activating, connect the device to a Wi-Fi and enter AFW hashtag MEMDM, which is the DPC identifier for MDM. Once you have entered this as your Google account, click on Next. You'll then be prompted to scan a QR code. To scan this QR code, go to MDM server and click on Enrollment. Click on EMM token enrollment. This is the QR code using which you can scan the devices and enroll the devices into MDM. If your devices run on Android 9.0 or later, you need not enter the DPC identifier AFW hashtag MEMDM. You can tap the welcome screen six times and scan this QR code to enroll the devices into MDM. And if your devices do not support camera, you can enter the server details and follow the on-screen instructions to enroll your device. Scenario three, what happens when two contradictory profiles are applied to a device? This scenario differs for different platform types. In Android, the most recent profile will take effect, while in Apple, the most secure profile will take effect. For example, if you distribute profile A with a disabled camera and profile B with camera enabled, in Android, profile B with camera enabled will take effect since that is the most recent. While in Apple, profile A with disabled camera will take effect since that is the most recent. Scenario four, what happens? How to ensure that your users connect to Wi-Fi only distributed via MDM? You can achieve this using restrictions. Let's go to MDM server and click on device management. Once you've clicked on device management, let's create a new profile. Provide a name and description and click on continue. Under restrictions, click on security and enable connect to Wi-Fi only if distributed via MDM. Before enabling this, ensure to distribute a Wi-Fi profile to the devices from MDM. Else, the device will not be able to connect to any Wi-Fi and lose contact with the MDM server. And also, if you are changing the Wi-Fi SSID, ensure to update that on the MDM profile. If not, the devices won't be able to connect to the Wi-Fi network. Click on OK, save this profile and publish it to your devices. Scenario 5. How can we prevent sensitive corporate content from being displayed on the device lock screen? 
For iOS devices, under Restrictions, click on Privacy. Disable Lock Screen Settings. So this will ensure that no notification is shown on the de lo device lock screen. For Android devices, let's create a new profile. Name the profile and provide a description and click on continue. Click on restrictions and security. You can choose to hide sensitive content from being displayed on the lock screen or choose to not show notifications at all. After you've chosen, save this profile, publish it, and distribute it to your devices. We have now come to an end of today's session. I hope you found this webinar informative. If you did, please rate us on a scale of one to five, where five is the best. You can also spread a word about this webinar in your social media handles. As I said before, this, rec this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be shared to your email in two business days. Please feel free to share it with your friends or colleagues who you think might benefit from this training session. Next training on app management and device security is scheduled on 13th of October, same time. Thanks everyone for joining in. Have a great day.